Gut, dann starten wir. Wunderschönen guten Abend, liebe Coaches, ähm, zur heutigen International Clinic mit äh, Coach Chris Norton. Äh, Coach Norton ist äh, Head Coach an der Perryville High School in Arkansas, unter anderem auch ähm, Rider für XNO Labs, hat dort auch einige Artikel verfasst und äh, Coach Norton wird heute über das über GT Run Game sprechen, wird grundsätzlich erstmal die Basis des Base erklären und dann äh, verschiedene, verschiedene ähm, Szenarien noch weiter ausformulieren, wo er Adjustments in Display einbaut, wo er verschiedene Facetten Display verändert, um auf bestimmte Gegebenheiten in der Defense zu reagieren. Ich denke, das ist ein Spielzug, den wir hier in Deutschland auch sehr gut kennen. Und ähm, ich bin besonders gespannt auf die verschiedenen Variationen, die Coach Norton uns präsentieren wird. So, uh, Coach, without further ado, I would kick over to you and I'm excited to listen and learn from you. Yes, sir, I appreciate that. So can you stop your screen sharing or do I have to make you as a host? Uh, you have to make me as a host. Okay. So. All right, we should be good to go now. Okay. Let me get this pulled up and we'll get started. <laughs> Excuse me. First off, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. As I shared with Coach as we were talking uh, before we got started, you know, we're in a really unique situation here in Arkansas. Uh, we've got the benefit of getting some foreign exchange students that have really helped us over the years. I think it's awesome that the game is growing like it is internationally uh, with really talented guys uh, that, that are, are, you know, showing up at, at the major college level here in Arkansas, especially uh, the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Uh, just put a punter in the NFL from Scotland. Uh, playing for the Browns, the University of Arkansas. Uh, had the Froholt kid, an offensive lineman from Denmark, I believe, that's playing for the Patriots now in the NFL. And, and I think that's a great deal. And we're excited to help however we can, you know, pass along some information that you guys might be able to use with uh, with your players, kind of regardless of level. And uh, all that said, we're going to kind of jump right in to talking about our GT run game. You know, it's something that we do pretty well in our program that we're really proud of. We think we do a good job of protecting it, which is a big part of, of any base concepts you have in, uh, in your offense. <clears throat> Excuse me. Talk a little bit about who we are offensively. We're an air raid team, you know, a lot like Mike Leach, how mommy over here in the States, we're spreading people out. Uh, we're trying to balance touches. And I think that's a really important thing that we always try to talk about we're not really worried about being run pass balance. 50-50 run, 50-50 pass doesn't mean as much to us. We're trying to balance touches. So we want our five skilled guys to touch the ball as equally as possible to make teams have to defend the entirety of the field. We talk a lot about creating grass and winning leverage. I think that's a huge part of football. Offensively, you're trying to create that grass. Defensively, you're trying to take grass away. Both sides are trying to outgain leverage on the opponent. I feel like we do a really good job offensively here at Perryville of trying to create grass and win leverage. We do that through scheme and we do that formation through formation. We try to be really concise in concept and multiple in presentation. We use what we call the rule of five here at Perryville. We're going to have five three-step concepts, five quick game concepts, five run concepts, and five screens. And that's it. If something needs to be added, then we've got to pull something out because we're never going to carry more than five of any of those categories. And we try to dress them up in a lot of different ways. This past fall, we used 39 different formations. For us, it's easier to teach a kid to stand somewhere different but do the same thing than it is to teach a kid how to do a bunch of different things. So we try to be really concise in concept, but we try to present it in a lot of different ways. Actually, in 2017, we used 50 different formations, you know, just little wrinkles here and there, things that we could do to dress up um, our offense. Another really important aspect and something we're going to talk about today as we talk about our GT game, we're trying to develop constraint plays off everything. Those are the plays that protect what you do best. For us here in our program, what we do best is run GT. So we work really hard to make sure that we're building things around that play 
to protect it, that allows us to continue to running it, to continue running it as much as we need to to be successful. And finally, we're not afraid to be different. You know, we've got good numbers in our program. Uh, we've got a pretty small coaching staff here in America. We've got myself and two assistants. So we're willing to do some things outside of the box. And you'll see that on some of the film clips we show. We use some unique formations, uh, some unique tags, and things that help put our kids in a position to be successful. Now, in terms of our identity play, you know, our bread and butter, this is who we are. GT is that play for us. It was our most utilized concept in the run game this past fall. We called it 140 times for 788 yards. We averaged 5.62 yards per call with it. GT is unique for me. When I first became a head coach in 2012, we would run GT. You know, we would toy with it, and we'll show some clips of that momentarily. But we got away from it. We went more zone-based for a few years and got back to it in about 2016 based off what Lincoln Riley at the University of Oklahoma was doing. And Coach Riley, of course, played uh, uh, for Leach at Mike Leach at Texas Tech, coached with Mike Leach at Texas Tech, coached at East Carolina had done some really neat things offensively. And as he really started to grow his program and his offense at Oklahoma, we started to borrow some of the, those ideas and kind of incorporate them into what we do. And here are a couple examples. We've got some cut-ups of the University of Oklahoma before we kind of get into our stuff to kind of explain how we took some of the things they're doing and, and molded them to fit uh, our guys at the high school level here in Arkansas. Okay, in this situation, they're in uh, – 11 personnel, they've got a tight end, one back in the game. They're going to bring a, a receiver in motion from left to right, running GT back to the left side. Okay, this is a play you'll see on film with us. Okay, very similar. Now we'll hop ahead to the next clip. We don't want to spend too much time on, on these. Um, here's an example of them throwing screen, which is something else we'll talk about as we get to our video. They're throwing screen off the GT look, trying to freeze linebackers. Steel yards, they're trying to take advantage of grass and leverage. And that was really the motivation for us about 2016 when Coach Riley got to Oklahoma to kind of make some wholesale changes to what we were doing in our running game. A great GT resource I want to share with you guys, Coach's Caviar is run by a coach here in Arkansas, a guy named Mark Kelly, who's the head coach at Searcy High School. Coach Kelly just won a 6A state title here in Arkansas with a really talented group. He does a great job with videos and cut-ups of a lot of college teams. Uh, you'll see his Twitter handles right here, at Caviar Coaches, his YouTube page, Coaches Caviar. This is a free resource that you guys can check out. One of the first videos Coach Kelly did was about Oklahoma's GT game and some really informative cut-ups uh, that he explained in great detail that uh, would be a great resource to, to kind of go back to once this clinic's over. Uh, Coach Kelly's also put up some really neat videos about uh, LSU, uh, the University of Alabama, some NFL teams, a lot of great resources for coaches up there that's 100% free, which I think is great. You know, I think that's a huge deal. So really highly recommend you guys check that out. <clears throat> our offensive line rules for our GT game are probably really similar to everybody else's. We try to be streamlined in how we teach this. Okay, in this instance, we're running GT to the right. So our right tackle is responsible for B gap to backside linebacker. In this diagram, you'll see we've got a three technique right here. That's a B gap player. So following our rules of B gap to backside, we're gonna try to collapse that three tech. Our play side guard is responsible for A gap to backside linebacker. You'll notice in the diagram, there's no A gap defender on the line of scrimmage. So he's gonna climb to backside. Our center is responsible for backside A gap. And the way we teach that to our centers is backside A gap extends to infinity. So there may not be a guy lined up in A, he may be lined up in B, but we're gonna extend this backside A gap forever until we collision somebody. And that helps us cut off backside pursuit. In this instance, there is an A gap player, the center's blocking back on. Our pulling guard is gonna kick, ideally, our pulling tackle is going to wrap off the guard's backside to the play side linebacker. Now, this guy can pose a problem. If you're trying to be in 10 personnel and run GT with one back, you've got to be careful about this backside defensive end because a lot of these guys are going to get in the hip pocket of the puller, and he's going to trail him down the line of scrimmage. 
So as we go along today, we're gonna to give you some ideas as to how to control that backside in. We do it with motion. We do it with uh, uh, two back packages. We do it by running the quarterback, which is something we're big into. And again, here's those rules just kind of uh, written down. Play side tackle again is B gap to backside linebacker. Play side guard is A gap to backside linebacker. The center is working backside A gap. And once again, we teach our centers that backside A extends to infinity. The backside guard is gonna kick or log the C gap defender. We'll talk about that log block momentarily. And the backside tackle is gonna read that guards behind and he's gonna pull to the play side linebacker. This has been a really easy teaching point for our kids because that tackle, we want, them, we want them to go like their hair's on fire and their backside's catching. We want them to move fast. So it's been easier for us to just teach that guy, hey, if the, if the guard's butt is to you, go ahead and wrap up. If the guard's butt disappears, that means he probably had to log that defensive end. So you'll wrap a little wider. And we'll show you how we drill that momentarily. Okay, again, as we mentioned at first, in 2012, 2013, my first couple of years as a head coach, we would toy with GT. I was the head coach at West Memphis Christian, a small private school uh, in Northeast Arkansas. We always ran GT out of 20 personnel, this formation that we call blue, excuse me. And we would always run it with cross buck action in the backfield. So it looked like this. Okay, our rules are still the same. We're B gap to backside. A gap to backside, backside A, kick, wrap. Okay, our rules stay the same. In the backfield, we'll show cross buck action. We would bring the opposite back across, he would feel backside. We'd take a counter step and get into our GT track. Now, here's the thing as we were doing this, this play wasn't very successful back then, you know, 2012, 2013. Part of the reason is because this is the only way we'd run the play. We didn't do a good enough job of building constraints around it to protect it. So every time we came out in this formation, defenses knew, hey, they're probably going to run GT. I was a young head coach, uh, 24 at the time. I, I, it was a mistake on my part. I should have done a better job of protecting the play. Now, we still utilize GT out of this formation, not as much as we did in 2012 and 2013 but we do a much better job of protecting it now than what we used to. And here's a couple clips. We'll try to slow these down. We'll run them through at full speed once and then we'll slow them down a time or two because I know sometimes uh, Zoom can lag a bit with videos. We're in blue formation. Okay, this is when we were at Rosebud. This young man right here, number 23, ran for 1,300 yards as a junior, uh, primarily running GT stuff. Now, when we teach GT, we really want our backs to hit the play as tight as possible. We're trying to hit A gap as tightly as we can. If A gap is cloudy, then we'll have that back gap over as they need to. But we feel like trying to hit the, the GT play as tight to A gap as you can is gonna allow you to really hit a seam and get vertical fast. Now our back right here gets a little wide, but it's still a productive play. And again, we'll run it through full speed once. We're down, 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 play side guard, play side tackle and center. You'll see we've got cross buck action here in the backfield. We'll kind of slowly go through this. Okay, right here we should be, let me pull up our laser pointer if I can find it. There we are. Okay, right here we should be blocking B gap to backside linebacker. Right here we should be A gap to backside, backside A. We'll kick, we'll wrap. We get a funny fit with our offensive line guys, but it, it works out okay for us. Okay, you'll see the cross buck action here in the backfield. As we're gonna take 33 right here, he should clear first. 23 should take a counter step so that we get this fitted up right at the, uh, at the line of scrimmage. Give me just a second, let my video catch back up. It's moving, moving kind of slow right now. My apologies, it normally loads up pretty well. It's moving a bit slow right here. All right, but 33 will cross space. He's gonna feel backside. 23 is gonna be the guy that takes the counter step. 
and gets back into the GT track to the second level. Let me try to get this working. Coach, give me just a second. Let me restart this PowerPoint, and then we can pick right back up if that's okay. Yeah, no problem, Coach. All right. If uh, anybody has any questions, y'all free to ask right now. We'll get this thing popped back up here momentarily <clears throat> and get right back going. All right, let me pull it, <clears throat> pull it right back up. All right, and again, kind of over the years, we've taken that same two bag package <clears throat> and we've started to dress it up more and more. And that's allowed us to continue running uh, GT with that cross buck look in the backfield because we'll motion the back at times. Uh, we'll do some different things to really protect uh, that play that we weren't doing when we first started running it uh, back in the day. All right, here we go. We've got it pulled back up now. Let me share the screen again and, and we'll get right to it. All right, there we go. We should be good to go. All right, let me get us back to where we were quickly. So, Coach, uh, we have got one yes. question. Um, the question is about what defensive schemes give you the most problems against GT Conda? Now, we're going to talk about that momentarily. What we really see that we've got to work hard at now are these teams that are playing odd front football and mm -hmm. showing a lot of the tight front stuff where they'll play two threes or two four eyes. Okay. And we also start to struggle a bit with three four teams that are taking outside linebackers and trying to fold them back in the box. Mm -hmm. And so we've had to tweak our rules a little bit. That's a great question. We've had to tweak our rules a little bit mm -hmm. to account for that. And we've got some uh, diagrams of that here in just a second. Okay, great. All right, here we go. We're back to our video. We're going to run this play one time through, and then we'll try to slow it down. If these films are real choppy, just let me know, and we'll try to slow them down even more. Okay, this is another example of us. In, uh, we're in blue. We're in our two-back set. We've got a tight end in the game here to the field. We hit this a little wide again. This was my first year here at Perryville. You're going to see us pull this, this guard to try to kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage. Our tackle is going to wrap. Our back hits it a little too wide. Okay, let me point something else out. Watch this guard. Uh, 55, I believe, is his number. When this guy, if the end man on the line of scrimmage gets way upfield, folks, your guard's wasting himself trying to chase him too deep. A guy that gets way up the field is going to run himself out of the play unless he's just an outstanding athlete. And you guys may see that. Sometimes we do too. But by and large, a kid in, at our level here in Arkansas that runs way upfield like that is going to take himself out of the play. So our guard kind of wastes himself right here, getting too deep for a guy that's not going to be able to get involved. I will right, kind of slow, slow it down just a bit. You'll see what we're talking about. This end's going to get way upfield. Okay, right there, we could let that man run. <clears throat> Hit that a little tighter and we've got a big play there. This is, again, this is us running uh, GT out of our two back 20 personnel stuff. Okay, here's another example. Uh, Brennan Marion, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, he's a receivers coach at the University of Hawaii now. He was the offensive coordinator at William & Mary. Uh, a lot of you guys that are on social media are going to know who he is. He started doing a lot of stuff where he set both backs to the same side. And we toy with this, and I think we're going to get more involved with it uh, over the next year or two. Right here, we're still in 20 personnel. We've got two backs in the game. They're both to one side of the quarterback. 
Now, instead of getting cross buck action, we're going to dive the inside guy, <clears throat> excuse me, and he's going to feel. He's going to try to get himself tackled. He's just going to feel for those guys trying to pursue the pullers. <clears throat> Our outside back is going to take a counter step and try to get back into his GT path. And we wind up hitting this for a decent play right here. Our front side guys should be down, B gap to backside, A gap to backside, backside A. We'll play this clip through. It's just another example of how we can run it from 20 personnel. We do a decent job of hitting that fairly tight. It's just another wrinkle we can use to try to run the play. Guard needs to be a little bit more physical. One coaching point that we use with our guards, when our, our, uh, our tackles, excuse me. We want our offensive tackles to try to aim at the inside number of the linebacker. You're going to see this guy wrap through the hole, but we want to try to fit on the inside number. That way we feel like we can fit and stick. When we wind up pulling up on the outside number, that linebacker can fall back off inside of us. And that's where we're trying to run the football. We're trying to run it as tight to A gap as we can. So we really preach to those tackles that are wrapping on the linebackers to aim for the inside number. <clears throat> okay, how we drill this. I know you guys had Nick Davis on from Rose Holman uh, a couple days ago. And Coach Davis is a phenomenal football coach that defends spread football extremely well. And when you are, are competing against coaches like that and teams like that, you've got to be able to fit the GT play in a lot of different ways because they're not just going to give you the same look every snap. So we use what we call X drill, and we've got two diagrams of it right here. We do this twice a week during practice. Uh, I'm the offensive line coach in addition to being the head coach, so we get a lot of individual time. I think that's where O-linemen get better is through endo work. Now, in this first example, uh, you're going to see this defensive end just playing a box technique. He's trying to get upfield. He's trying to box everything in, force it back inside. In this instance, we're going to try to kick him out. The tackle is going to wrap up on the play side backer. Okay, that's easy. And that's what we see most of the time. Uh, I know kids, our opponents are well coached. There's a lot, a lot of good coaches in our state, a lot of good coaches across the country, across the world. Uh, but kids are still silly sometimes, and they don't always do what they're coached to do. So we see a lot of defensive ends that are just running upfield, like they're strolling through the daisies. You know, and they, they wind up taking a big shot on the kickout block because they're not expecting it or they don't take it on correctly. But now, some teams work really hard to try to bend and spill. And this is an example right here. This defensive end sees the down block. He's going to try to bend off that hip and force the play to spill outside where they're working a, a scrape exchange. And we've got a good clip of this in a few minutes. In this instance, if we're seeing a defensive end that tries to wrong arm and spill the play, our guard has to be able to log that. He's got to be able to be flexible enough in his hips to roll his backside and pin that defensive end down inside. Once the tackle sees that, he's going to wrap a bit wider to pick up this linebacker that's trying to exchange the run fit with the defensive end. Okay, and this is what guys like, you know, Coach Davis and a lot of other coaches are doing that are really putting teams in binds. And this is what a lot of those tight front teams that we talked about a second ago based off the question are doing that are getting that extra uh, uh, run guy in the box and, uh, and outnumbering you offensively, uh, be it with a linebacker or, for, or with a safety. So these are drills that we do every week, twice a week. We call it X drill. Uh, we'll have these guys normally holding dummies. Uh, that way they're not absorbing the blow every time. And we just work on the kick out. We work on the log. And our tackles have to work on being athletic and, and reading the guard's block and getting to where they need to be. <clears throat> now, the question earlier was about the defensive looks that give us the most trouble. Where we've had to really work hard to get better is against 3-4 teams that are playing just a base 3-4 like we do. We're a 3-4 team here at Perryville. And we're going to play head up on your tackles. We're going to play a zero technique at nose. Where we started to have issues with this is we would see teams that would take these defensive ends wide and they would fold these outside linebackers back into B gap. And we would not account right here for this cap. So we've got a free hitter in the hole when we try to run GT. Now we've got these diagrams drawn up here on PowerPoint using the quarterback as the ball carrier. I believe in running the quarterback from 10 personnel because I believe it gets you that extra body involved in the run game and it lets you get numbers even back up. 
So when we see three, four teams and we call our GT play, in this instance, we're going to run GT to the left. We're going to arc this play side tackle. Okay. On the snap of the football, we want him getting whipped and trying to arc that defensive end to that outside linebacker. And the reason why we do that, we feel like one or two, one of two things is going to happen. If they've got a stunt call that has this guy going wide and we take this path to arc, that should be an easy block. We can just latch on and get whipped. Now, if they try to play it pretty straight up and this guy's the B-gap player, then by showing this arc block, we're encouraging him to widen a bit because normally when you see an arc or a reach, you're thinking it's sweet. So we're trying to make this guy take a false step so that he'll be easier to kick out. Okay, so we're going to arc him. We're going to block backside or, or a gap to backside linebacker. When we get a three-man front, we consider the nose an a gap player. So we're going to slice him right here with the guard whose job is a gap to backside linebacker. Okay, the center in this instance against the three-four is going to climb to the backside backer, backside a gap. We're going to kick. The kick's going to be a little tighter. We're going to wrap. We'll feel backside. In this example, the quarterback's the ball carrier. So we feel like we can get these six guys accounted for by running the quarterback in this, uh, in this example against a 3-4 look. We'll arc. We'll work A gap to backside, backside A. And we feel like we can even numbers back up. That's one of the ways that we've gone to attack in 3-4 looks. Okay, now the tight front. Tight front poses a little bit different issue. They're going to line these guys up in either threes or four eyes and kind of bunch everything back in a little bit. When we get this kind of look, a tight look, we don't want to arc because this guy's alignment will make it hard for him to be kicked by the guard. Okay, it's the same kind of deal that would make it hard to run trap against him because when he gets a down block here, he'll squeeze that real tight and he's going to take away any space. So here we just go back to our rules, B gap to backside. A gap to backside, backside A. Okay, with a with a three uh, technique right here, a tight front. We'll go ahead and block this guy. When he was wider against a regular three four, we would be more concerned about the better athlete at the second level. Okay, but in this instance, since he's in a three, a little closer to the ball, we're blocking back on him. Backside A gap. We're going to kick the end man. In this instance, it'd be the linebacker. We're going to wrap. We're still filling backside with the back. Okay, it's just another example with our quarterback. Okay, just little wrinkles that we'll use against some of these fronts that give us some issues. So we'll take care of these three down guys. We'll kick the end man. We'll wrap up. And we've got a play right here. We've got a, a video of this against a tight front team right here. This is a, a pretty well-coached team that we play in our conference here in Arkansas. They've got these guys lined up tight. Uh, this one looks like a four-eye at the top of the screen. We wind up getting the down guys taken care of. We actually run this to our back out of 10 personnel, which we don't do a lot. All right, but right here, we're going to stop the video, kind of talk through this. They're going to try a, a blitz right here. They're going to walk this backer down and try to bring pressure into what looks like A, opposite the nose. And they're going to take and try to scrape this linebacker over the top. What winds up happening is we're blocking down right here this linebacker who's trying to pressure gets caught up in the wash and gets taken to the ground. He gets caught up in traffic. So all we have to account for now is the outside backer and the inside backer, and we do a really good job of that. Watch our tackle right here, make an adjustment and account for this linebacker as they try to exchange this over the top. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, folks. That's one thing I really wanna stress about this play. You know, you can go through film and it doesn't have to be beautiful, but you want to get a hat on a hat and give your kids a chance. And in this case, that's what we do. The blitzer gets knocked to the ground. He gets caught up in traffic. We're able to get fitted on this guy who's trying to scrape and they just don't have enough bodies left to fit the run. This is a big play for us and a big game that we won. Uh, just an example of how we try to attack uh, these teams that are playing a lot of odd front stuff against us. We'll watch through it one more time. We get a decent job of washing guys down. Our center, 62, needs to be a little bit better right here as he tries to get into backside A on this down guy. This young man's playing Division I football, 66 in blue. Uh, pretty good player, but we needed to get a little bit better block on him.
Okay, so that's how we handle those two fronts. They can give us, give us some fits. Another thing that we do that's really helped us against uh, these three, four teams that are trying to get extra bodies in the box and doing some things with linebackers, we run the quarterback. Uh, this is something we got big into in 2016 when I was at Lake Village High School. I, I think it gets that extra body in the box and really helps you even things up. This fall, uh, uh, running quarterback GT, which is our main play, uh, we ran for 481 yards, called it 58 times, averaged 8.29 yards per carry. What this suggests is I should have called the play more. Our quarterback ran, our position as a whole, ran for four, uh, 987 yards this fall, 15 touchdowns, had a really talented kid back there. And this is kind of how it looks, kind of like those diagrams we just showed you. Uh, this is against a, a four-man front, a nickel front. You know, we're B gap to backside, A gap to backside, backside A. You're kicking the C gap defender. You're wrapping the backfield's backside. Quarterback's getting downhill. Okay, that's the main way we run that. Again, we started in 2016. Ariane Kilgore, who was a special athlete, ran for 971 yards. 2017, our quarterback ran for 596. And then this fall, our quarterback uh, ran for 938 on his own. He was an all-state kid, a, a super competitive guy who really made us a better football team. Uh, he was a converted receiver. Uh, when In July of 2018, when I got here, we moved him to quarterback, and he really took to the position well. Now, in terms of quarterback GT, I wanted to give out resources. Uh, for those of you that may not have seen it, the Coaches Lounge is a great website for coaches that is 100% free. A couple of coaches here in Arkansas, uh, DJ Mars and Drake Widener run that website. Their Twitter handle is right here. Uh, great free resources. We have an article up about our quarterback GT game that, that I'd encourage you guys to go check out. We've got a bunch of stuff written up about kind of how we call it and how we protect it. And uh, that's just another free resource that you guys may find valuable. Okay, we've got some clips right here of us running our GT game. Uh, right here, we're in trips. We're three by one. We spent about 29% of our snaps this fall in three by one. It was our most used formation. Uh, we call this late. Okay, in this instance, we're trying to run quarterback GT back to the right. We're going to take the back cross face and feel backside. Our tackle right here, 63, needs to do a better job of fitting up on this backer. Again, we want to try to fit on the inside number, and Leighton fits on the outside. But our quarterback hits it really tight, and we still have a big play from it. 71 does a decent job. One thing that we, we – uh, stay on our guys about we want to really be physical with our hands on the line of scrimmage and, and these guys were a flex bone team before I got here so they kind of block things a little differently 71 does a great job right here getting back to the backside linebacker but we'd like for him to fit that block up a little better than what he does right there with his shoulder but it worked great again 63 needs to make sure he fits up on his inside number it turns into a big play for us. We hit that about as tight to A-gap as you possibly could, and we're able to, uh, to really get downhill and, and turn that into a big play with our quarterback, who's a really talented kid. Okay, we've got another example. Uh, this play, the clip starts a little late. I don't know about y'all, but we have some uh, adventures sometimes with our filmers over here. Uh, we just get whoever we can get to help do it. Sometimes we miss the start of some plays. Right here, the ball's already snapped. We're running quarterback GT again. You can see we're riding the back. He's going to feel backside. 65 is going to land a kick out right here. 63 is going to climb. Now, nobody shows. So 63 does what we teach them. If nobody's there, you just keep climbing until you find a guy in a different color jersey. And he winds up having to run about 20 yards before he can get to the point of engaging anybody. He should have done a better job here on the second level at the top of this plate of trying to get fitted with that guy. But, but all in all, you know, this was a really positive deal for us, turned into a big play. Watch that one more time. We do a good job up front. And again, this clip starts late. We do a decent job up front of getting everything sealed off. Our backs, when they feel, pay attention to uh, this running back right here. He gets slung down by the helmet. But ideally, we want those guys to kind of double over like they've got the football and go get themselves tackled as they're trying to feel backside. And uh, he needs to do a little bit better job there, but he got the job done. We are able to hit it for a big play. It was our homecoming game. Uh, so that was a big deal for us. Okay, here's another example. Uh, this is, again, a team that played some tight front stuff with us. 
they do a good job of looping this outside linebacker back in. So we really had to work hard running GT. We're going to run quarterback GT to the left. Again, this is a big play for us, something that we utilize a lot. We get fitted, and we're able to hit that tight enough that they were able to get a free hitter back in the box. Okay, they've got this guy widened. They're able to get him back in the box, but by the time he gets there, the quarterback's able to run by him. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You've just got to be able to get fitted up and get your kids to hit this stuff as tight to A-gap as they can, and you're going to be able to, to rack up some big plays off of it. And again, our quarterback was a big guy, about 6'3", 200 pounds. It was a really good athlete, really tough kid. One more time, we'll go through it. We're going to land the kick out. We're going to get fitted. 71's got to do a better job getting fitted up. But we're able to hit it tight enough. It's a big play for us. All right, we'll hop ahead. Another wrinkle that we use when we want to run quarterback GT is bash, okay, back away. Now, right here in this first diagram, we're in 10 personnel, okay? Instead of having the back cross face and feel, we're going to have him try to get wide like he's running a sweep track. Our quarterback's going to read this backside in. Now, we're not concerned about this guy widening, okay? If he widens, obviously, the quarterback's going to keep it. But as long as he just sits, then we're confident with the quarterback keeping the football. The only thing that he can't do is come crashing down inside. If that happens, we're going to give the ball off to the edge. And over here to the right, this is an example of us running it out of 20 personnel. This is a wrinkle we've started using that's allowed us to protect our crossbuck action some. Uh, we talked earlier about struggling with it a bit uh, because we didn't do a good job of having constraint plays for it. Okay, so this is one of the things that we've gone to to really kind of help that out. The H is going to arc. The F is cross and face. If this guy crashes, we're handing the ball wide. If he sits or widens, the quarterback's going to keep the thing. And we've got a clip of that here. Okay, this is from a couple of years ago. We're going to play this clip forward. Now, we're reading this right here. Okay, but you'll see this linebacker is going to walk up right here. Okay, this linebacker is going to walk up to the line of scrimmage. Once we see that, we're not worried about the read anymore. The quarterback knows he's going to keep the thing because they're bringing an extra guy that we can take care of on that other side. Quarterback does a good job of hitting it, turns into a big play. Uh, defensively, this team we're playing guys, you know, don't pay as much attention to them. That You know, they did some silly stuff. But, you know, get this thing fitted pretty well. It's a decent block by 64. 74 is trying to find work. Needs to be a little bit more athletic on the second level. But it turns into a big play for us. Now, had this linebacker not walked up, we would read this cat right here. Okay, and if he widened or if he set, the quarterback would keep. If he crashed inside with the pulling guard and pulling tackle, we would have given that thing to the edge. But we knew as that linebacker walked up that the quarterback was going to keep the ball. It turned into a big play for us. That's just another example of how we can protect stuff out of our 20 personnel, our blue formation. All right, another way that we work really hard to protect our, G, our GT play is through the use of motion. Okay, and if you're going to utilize motion, some really important things to consider, you've got to have a plan in mind. Don't move guys just to move them. Try to move them with a plan. What are you trying to see? What are you trying to accomplish? For us, when we utilize motion, most of the time we're trying to hold the backside in to keep them from pursuing uh, the pulling guard, pulling tackle. We use six different kind of motions. We also use a shift call we call burst. Uh, and again, we do this to try to put that backside in in conflict. Uh, to slow him down, and it helps us run GT out of 10 personnel. And we'll also motion a back out of 20, out of our two-back stuff. We'll talk about that, and we'll move our H back, and we utilize our H back quite a bit as well, and we'll have some clips of that. Okay, this clip right here, we're going to be in move motion. We're going to move the back from right to left, and we're going to throw just a flare screen off a GT look. Right here, we're going to pull the left tackle and left guard. Take note of this kid right here, 34. He's a great athlete. We pull those guards. He freezes just enough for us to win the edge over here. He's the best athlete on the field, folks. He's better than any – he's more athletic than any kid we've got. But by him having to take false steps, reading this tackle, he sees the pull. He's going to take false steps. That's going to slow him down just enough for us to get this ball to the edge. And that turns into a, you know, 12, 15-yard play against a really talented team that we beat for the first time in school history this fall. We'll look at it one more time. 
Okay, this is just an example of how we try to protect our GT stuff. This guy knows he's got to play it. He's got to make sure he's getting in the run fit. Then we get the ball to the edge before he's able to get out there. Okay, now obviously a really good athlete still gets in on the play, but we picked up a first down. Okay, just one way we can utilize motion. All right, here's another example. This is what we call tiger motion. Watch this guy out here. Okay, this is our X. We're going to bring him in motion behind the quarterback. Okay, what we're trying to do by that is hold this defensive end over here to keep him from pursuing the play. We've got some wrinkles we do off this that we'll show you momentarily. Okay, we're going to bring the guy in motion. We're trying to hold these backside guys. Linebackers take some false steps. We're able to hit that tight. It's a nine-yard gain right there, and it allows us to run GT out of 10 personnel. Okay, watch these linebackers. Watch their steps. They're widening with the motion because they're worried we're going to throw the screen out there or we're going to toss it, and it winds up putting them in a bad spot in the fit. Okay, that's a really easy way to utilize motion to protect one of your base plays. Okay, we'll watch it one more time. We call that tiger motion. He's getting deep behind the quarterback, and we've got some wrinkles off that that we'll talk about. Back hits it tight. There's a good running back, good player. A really positive play for us. All right, this is another example. We've got Tiger Motion on here again. Okay, this time we're going to run GT with the quarterback into the boundary. Uh, this team we're playing uh, is, a, is a really good team in our state, plays for multiple state titles. We've got Tiger Motion right here, getting depth. Quarterback's able to hit it tight. Turns into a big play for us, a first down run. Okay, we utilize the motion to help us here. We're trying to make these linebackers take false steps and mess with their run fits a bit. The F is going to cross face and feel backside. And we're going to try to hit this tight behind that pulling tackle. It's just another example of GT. Do a good job with the kick out. 71 climbs, does a decent job. Quarterback's a good athlete. That turns into a big play for us. We'll go through it one more time. Okay, this is, again, it's just tiger motion. This is a way to influence those linebackers to take false steps and kind of mess with their run fits. Okay, their concern is we're going to try to get it to the edge with that receiver. 22 needs to do a little bit better job blocking. That's a big play for us against a really good football team. All right, now here's one of those wrinkles that we have off that same kind of motion. We're going to bring number 20 right here, who's an outstanding athlete in tiger motion, deep behind the quarterback. This team that we're playing is in man. It's a two-point conversion play. Uh, we wind up getting it. We won this game 35-34 against our big rival. We're going to show GT up front. We're going to pull guard and tackle right here and toss this ball back out to 20. We hold those guys inside just enough. 20 is able to get into the end zone. We pick up the two-point conversion play. That's one of the things that we utilize to help make those linebackers and all widen. Now, our rules for Tiger Motion and how it helps us with GT. In this instance, the back's on the right because we're showing GT to the left. He's going to give a counter step and run his GT track. That means the guy in motion is going to go all the way outside, okay, because the back's away from him. Now, if the back was lined up here to the left, this motion would get here, stick his foot in the ground, and get back wide. The reason we do it differently based off where the back's aligned if the running back's to the left, we would be showing GT to the right. We'd pull guard, tackle, have the back counter step here to run his GT track. So we would want this motion to get here, stick his foot in the ground, and go back to help us hold these backside guys because that's one of the things that we try to accomplish with motion. So based off his alignment, he'll run that a couple different ways. That's a good job right there. We're able to get it to the edge, get the two-point conversion, and get the win. All right. Another way that we try to protect our GT game is utilizing the H-back. We call him a cowboy back. Uh, we stole that from Oklahoma State University. Uh, we use our cowboy backs a lot. But most people call them H-backs. Some of the tags that we use, okay, we talk about choke. Choke is a tag that communicates with the H-back and the backside tackle, the pull and tackle. Okay, choke has the tackle clean backside B-gap. He's going to take a step inside hinge like a door and not let anybody cross his face. He's just closing that gap down so that he cuts off backside pursuit. Choke is going to tell the H-back to take over the tackle's responsibility on the pull and wrap. Okay, everything to the front side remains the same. If there's not a tag, 
the backside guard, backside tackle still pull. The H back will take care of cleaning up the backside B gap to make sure there's no run through, no pursuit from the backside. We'll also have tags to have the H back arc release and for the H back to join the guard and tackle on a pull, uh, which is something we call Kong, like King Kong. Uh, and we'll have some clips of that as we go right here too. This is just another way of dressing this play up and protecting it. Okay, in this instance, uh, we've got GT called. We're going to the back right here. We send 32 in motion. We run it same side. We get a decent kick out block right there by number 60. 32 is going to come in motion. We call this slide. He's going to wrap on the play side linebacker. Does a, a decent job right there. You can see they folded a guy back inside. We're down at the goal line, so they're able to get the safety down, but you know, he didn't give his body up right there. Okay, this is just an example of how we can utilize the H-back. It's a two-point conversion run for us. Okay, here's another example. This is our H-back right here. We're going to run quarterback GT to the left. So our guard right here, number 60, and number 27 will be the pullers. The tackle, 51, should try to choke the gap down on backside, choke big gap. Does a decent job of that. Turns into a touchdown run. Quarterback's a big kid, gets in. That's a, uh, a touchdown in the game. We won 31-7. Okay, 60 does a decent job on the kickout block. Kid gets, the defender gets hurt a bit. Uh, this is just another example of how we can utilize the H-back to get everything fitted up. That backside tackle, he's just going to choke that gap down. 51 right here is going to choke that gap and keep any backside pursuit from coming through. Okay, now this is an example of calm. Okay, like King Kong, we call it that because we feel like we're just going to tear stuff up. That's how we teach it to the kids. In this instance, we're going to pull the guard, the tackle, and the cowboy back. We do this a couple different ways. In this instance, we're going to run it with the quarterback. Okay, we're going to have the back feel backside. We can also run it with the back. This turns into a nine-yard gain. Quarterback gets took off the ground here late, but forward progress was stopped. It's a nine-yard gain on first down. Again, we pull all three guys. That's just a Kong tag. <clears throat> We're going to still kick with the guard, wrap with the tackle, and the cowboy back to second level. Okay, it turns into a productive play force. Now, here's Kong drawn up. Okay, the guard is still kicking out the C gap defender. The tackle's still wrapping. He's going to look for first threat inside. The cowboy back is wrapping, look for first, looking for first threat outside. And that's how we set that up when we send all three. Primarily, we're going to call this against teams that aren't pursuing backside. They've either that's either not how they want to play it, or they're they're worn down and they're just not pursuing with the same effort as they were early. This is a call that we'll use to help us do that. Okay, this is a big rivalry game. Uh, we're going to pull all three guys again right here. Defensive end gets way upfield, takes himself out of the play, and, and that's a really fast kid that's able to beat everybody to the house. Okay, that's just GT to the right. Uh, we've got a Kong tag, so we're pulling everybody. All three guys are going. We knew these guys weren't pursuing hard, 55, getting too deep upfield. So we felt like we could run it. We wind up hitting it for a big play. Okay, just another way that we can dress up our GT game. All right, another example. This is from a scrimmage. We've got Kong call. We're going to pull guard, tackle, and cowboy back. Able to cut this back. Our center doesn't do a great job right here, but we're still able to turn it into a big play. These guys weren't pursuing with great effort, so we felt like we could hand that off. You can see uh, this defensive end, 53, is kind of slow playing it, like he's expecting quarterback run, like some sort of, of read back at him. And we were able to hand that thing off. 77 needs to do a better job at center, but turns into a big play for us. Again, just pulling all three guys, what we call Kong, K-O-N-G. Getting a lot of bodies in the hole, trying to tear stuff up. That's how we teach it. Decent job our back. That was our first year here early on in our scrimmage. Okay, another way that we try to protect our GT game is through packaging. We try to package screen game with everything that we do. Okay, and here's a couple examples. In late, we like to run the arc to the three-man side. We run what we call Randy and Larry to the single receiver side. And the quarterback's reading numbers. You know, one thing that I really encourage you guys to do, your quarterbacks can count. You know, they may not have great arms. They may not be super athletes. Sometimes you just got what you got. We deal with that too. 
but, but they can all count numbers. And we allow our quarterback to kind of count numbers and make decisions uh, based off grass and leverage. So he can kind of throw the screen, give the football off, keep the football, whatever it may be, just based off numbers. And we'll have some clips of that as well. Okay, right here, we're in a four by one set, a quad set. <clears throat> our quarterback's trying to read numbers right here to the quad side. Okay, in this instance, we've got a down guy, we've got two guys deep, and we've got a guy right here in the alley. He doesn't like numbers here, but he likes numbers in the box. We've got the two ends, the nose, and the two backers. So we know we've got five guys inside. We've got GT to the right call. Our quarterback is going to open up and look at the screen. We teach him to open up long enough to say no. Once he says no, that allows the, the lineman time to clear. He's going to pull it. He's going to run his GT track right here for a big play. You see him open up, no, tuck it and go. We do a good job right here, tackle, trying to get hands on somebody downfield. Turns into a big play for us. This is one of those instances where we're not afraid to be different formation-wise, and we're trying to force these guys into a bad spot. They're having to empty the box, play a five-man box against an athletic quarterback who does a good job right here. He's going to open up to that screen just long enough to say no. He's going to pull the ball down, and we wind up hitting a pretty big play. All right, here's another example. Uh, this is a team that's pretty good right here, uh, pretty athletic. Now, this kid right here at the top of the screen was a stud. He was on a bum ankle, though, and we thought we could kind of pick on him a bit. We're going to throw a screen game over here to the field. We liked our matchup with him being a, a little bit gimpy with a bad ankle that week. We've got to get a better block right here from our receiver from number seven, but we're still able to turn this into a pretty positive play. See, so we're showing GT inside. Seven's got to do a better job of, of cracking back on that guy. Our film's a little crazy right there. But uh, we're still able to turn this into about a nine-yard game. Okay, on second down, it gets us back in front of the chains, gives us about a third and one. Okay, again, quarterback's just playing numbers and, and grass. Okay, he, he feels like we've got grass right there to the field. We know that corner's got a bad ankle. We're going to try to take advantage of that, get the ball out here to the edge. Now, these guys are showing a, uh, a five-man box. One of the reasons that we didn't give the ball off right here, well, let me go back to that. One of the reasons that we didn't give the ball off right here is because they had shown on film that they were taking these outside backers and bringing them hard back into the box and trying to get numbers on you. So our quarterback knew that, understood that they were probably going to bring this guy right here when he saw a down block, and he did. He fitted hard to the run, and uh, quarterback decided to try to play the game on the edge. And it turned into a uh, turned into a decent play for us. All right, so we'll hop ahead. Uh, this is an instance we've got a reverse called off of our GT game right here. We're going to bring motion. Uh, this is one of our better athletes, number twenty, is going to come in motion. We're going to run GT to the right, and we're going to reverse this thing back around uh, to this wide receiver as we go. You'll see the guard and tackle both pull. We fake to the back. Flow is totally going away from the reverse. And this turns into a big, big play for us. I believe this was third down, maybe been second down. Uh, but this gave us a big play right here. Second down and uh, 10. The motion and the GT action got flow hard towards the field. We're able to reverse it back to our sideline for a really big play. And this is something we're going to toy with and keep trying to build on. The way we taught this to our offensive lineman, he's working B gap to backside, the tackle, and he's going to peel back for anybody in pursuit. Our guard is working a gap to backside. He's going to run and try to, to uh, uh, run what we call the street, try to block the most dangerous man down the field. And our center's blocking backside A. He's trying to make sure there's no pursuit. That's kind of how we set that up. Uh, guard does a great job. I don't know that he really makes contact with anybody, but he's, he's looking to lay a shot on somebody that's a big man moving well in the open field. And it uh, turns into a really big play for us. Okay, that's just another example of a, a way you can package your GT game to try to protect it. All right, right here, we get into some quirky sets. We're unbalanced. We've got all four wide receivers to one side. This guy's ineligible by a line that he's covered up. We're going to motion our back, what we call move motion, and we're going to throw screen game to him over here on the edge. We're going to show a GT right here with our right guard, right tackle. 
try to hold guys into the box for a second. This turns into a productive little play force. We're able to get the ball out to the edge quick. Okay, it's just another little wrinkle that we can use. Uh, try to get the ball out wide, give ourselves a chance to make a play. Off of motion. All right, another example of something we try to we use a lot uh, to protect our GT game, we like stacking receivers. A big reason we do that is because you've got to utilize two defenders with the stack. You've got to have somebody play inside and somebody play out. Uh, in this instance, we felt like we had good grass down here to the boundary. Uh, this guy wasn't a great athlete. Uh, we were going to try to take advantage of how they were aligned. They were backpedaling the corners out hard. So we're going to show a GT look inside. We're going to throw the quick screen down here to the stack guy. It's an easy throw and catch. Picks up about nine yards right there. Uh, just a really almost like stealing. Okay, an easy throw and catch and, and a big play force right there on first down. Okay, and it looks like GT inside. Just another way that we can try to dress that up and protect it a little bit. And I really encourage you, if you're not using a lot of stacked receivers, that's a great thing to do because it really forces the defense to have to get creative uh, to how they align the stuff. Okay, and the last thing we're going to cover today, uh, a hammer. Hammer is a tag that we use uh, off of running back screen in motion. We're going to base the, the play side defensive lineman. This is something we borrowed from Rick Trickett, who used to be at Florida State University. Uh, they ran it off a stretch. We have a play in our offense we call base, and it looks really similar uh, to that. The center is going to work backside A gap just like he would under traditional GT. And it's something you can run with the back or the quarterback. And I'm going to show, uh, show a clip of that using Go Army Edge, which is a really neat deal. Uh, let me pull that up real quick. And we'll, uh, we'll go through that. Okay, we've got uh, a two-back set. We're in blue right here. In this instance, we're going to take the left tackle. We're going to base the end. We're going to use the guard to base the tackle. The center is going to block back. And we're going to pull both the guard and tackle right here into A-gap. And we're just going to try to overload these two linebackers at the point of attack. We're going to motion the back to try to pull this defensive end. We're trying to force him to widen by motion. Okay, snap of the football. We're going to base everything up on the front side. Guard and tackle are going to insert tight into A. And we're just going to try to overload you at the point of attack. This is something we've toyed with. We ran a couple of years ago and are going to try to incorporate some more here at Perryville going forward. Uh, just a, a, a wrinkle to run your GT play, and it looks a lot like another concept that we use. Again, this is something that we stole from Florida State and Rick Trickett, who used to be their offensive line coach, and uh, they ran it off a stretch look. We're not a big stretch team, uh, so we're going to run it off a play that we call base, but something we, we're excited about, something our kids really like, and, and we're going to try to utilize as much as we can. And all that said, guys, I'm going to put my contact information up here. Uh, this is my email, probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. I will be happy to share this whole PowerPoint with you. Uh, I'll also share any cut-ups you may want of anything that we do. Just shoot me an email. Let me know what you'd like, and, and I can get that sent to you in a number of ways, either through Huddle or through Google Drive. And uh, right here, it's my Twitter handle. I know a lot of you guys are really active on social media. Uh, you know, Shoot me a follow. We love talking ball. We'll share anything that we do. and. Uh, hopefully you guys got something from it. And if, if you got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, Coach, thank you very much. Um, it was a great presentation. Um, we've got two questions. The first one is um, about the, sp the spill technique and the lock block out of the, uh, out of the guard. Do you have got any examples of GT versus the, the spill technique? We do. If, if anybody would like them, if you'll shoot me an email, then I will put together some cut-ups through Huddle, and, and I will just share all the cut-ups. I can either share them through Huddle or share them through Google Drive. Uh, we do have some teams that work really hard to wrong arm us, and uh, we've also got some cut-ups of teams that, that do a lot of scrape exchange stuff, and I'll share any of that with you guys that, that may want it. Oh, great, Coach. And uh, the second question is, um, is – about a, um, a defensive stunt, how do you block um, against a pick stunt where we, maybe you have got a four, four down front, you have got two, two one techniques, and both sure. of the one techniques step, step into, the, uh, into, into your snapper, 
into your center and when and you have got one picker from the play side and the back side back side tackle is wrapping around and wrapping around your your play side guard so he's going to the open open b gap on the uh on the play side of the gt how you work against that sure and and stuff like that like ton stuff and stuff like that they'll pose an issue they do they'll, they'll pose an issue what we try to stress to our kids is hey as long as we follow the rules and we're B gap to backside, we're A gap to backside, we're picking up anybody that shows. We, we kind of teach it like a train on a track. Anybody that crosses your track gets blocked. But, you know, even then, when you see a lot of teams that are doing, you know, ton stunts and things like that inside with defensive line guys out of four-man front, it, it can pose you an issue. When we see teams that do that and it's a game plan thing, primarily we're going to try to attack them with what we call base, which is like a one-back power. Mm -hmm. uh, that's more what we want to go to against those guys. Now, if we get caught during the course of the game and a team jumps into it, we're just going to have to try to rely on our rules as best we can because it does, it's a great call for it. You know, that we feel like if we get into base, you know, that kind of negates some of that. But that's part of that give and take of football. You know, those, those ton stunts and nut stunts and things like that inside, they are something that can give this concept fits. Um, you know, if, if you're not following your rules, if you're not doing some of those things, or if, if they've just got dudes, and we see that sometimes. Mm -hmm. but, but what we try to do is we want to try to check into base and some other stuff when we see teams that are doing a ton of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't see it a whole heck of a lot uh, just because we, we've got some other concepts we can use. But, but we, we've had some issues with it in the past. You know, we try to game plan it as best we can when we see it. But if it's a deal where they just line up and jump into it, then we just tell our kids to trust our rules as best we can, and, and we're going to try to make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing, Coach. When you, um, when you see that, you, you talked about the one-back power. Um, how do you run your one-back power to protect the GT game? How we, how we run what we call base, which is one-back power. Let me, go back to, uh, let me go back to a deal where we've got like a four-man front drawn up. Give me just a second. All right, in this instance right here, okay, this is uh, – Glenn Rose is a pretty good football team in a four-man front. We want to run our one-back power at the three technique, okay, which right here is to the boundary, it looks like. Uh, Dad, let me get back to that. I'm clicking around on my – okay. So right here, this looks like the three. Okay, when we run what we call base, we're going to base block this three technique. So in this instance, our left guard is going to base this kid. Our center is going to block back on the one. Our backside guard is going to skip pull into A gap and climb to this play side backer. Our two tackles are going to throw shoulders, high shoulder, to try to get these guys into a pass rush look. And we want to try to force these ends up the field. Then we're going to climb second level. We're okay letting these two defensive ends try to get depth so that the tackles can climb, so that we can pin linebacker inside, linebacker inside. The back's going to take a slide step to the quarterback to close space. Like in this instance, he's going to take a slide step with his right foot, boom, get downhill immediately. We're just trying to get tight into A gap. We'll pull on this linebacker. It's something we like to go to, you know, four, four to go, three to go, whatever it may be on the chains. You know, it's kind of our dive play. You know, we just – one back power is what it amounts to. But when we see a te teams that are wanting to do a lot of movement and all like that, that's a play that's helped us in the past because teams get hesitant to move when they're worried you're going to try to run a gap on them because they're concerned that they're not going to be able to get into the stunt fast enough to defend that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that, you know, that's something that, that we like to use, and we'll dress it up. We can run it with the quarterback too. But that's what we found. Teams that want to be really stunt heavy out of the four-man front, we've got to try to make sure we're attacking them downhill as quick as possible because that discourages them a lot of times at our level from trying to utilize some of that stuff because their concern is they're not going to be able to get fitted up to the run fast enough uh, by moving guys. You know, and that's where we differ from some people. A lot of spread teams don't run a gap. That's something that we try to get really good at. You know, I think if you can run a gap as a spread football team, it's going to help you be successful. And, and that's something that we work really hard to try to do well.
Yeah, that's a good play. Um, I've got one more question. How do you block the defensive ends in that one-back power? You say when, when they go upfield, you will let them go, but how is your progression? What, what we try to teach our tackles is we're going to throw our shoulders high. So in this instance, our tackles are always up in a two-point stance. We keep our guards in a three only because we'll cut sometimes in our quick passing game. You know, if the, if the defense really has a dude at, at the one or the three, sometimes we'll just cut them down in our quick game so we keep the guard's hand on the ground. The tackles are always up. So on the snap of the football, they're going to take a, a, a set with their outside leg. They're going to throw shoulders high. And we teach those tackles to try to land a post, a good aggressive punch, using their outside arm into the inside number of the defensive end. And what we're trying to do is force that end shoulders to open making it a little bit tougher for them to redirect. So we're showing high shoulders. We're trying to get them upfield. We're trying to land that post to force their shoulders open. Then our tackles are climbing. And we're going to try to get those ends upfield enough and widened enough that they're not able to come collapse back inside on the power, if that makes sense. You know, we're just trying to force them out and open so that it makes it harder for them to kind of bend that inside uh, to mm -hmm. tackle the power. Now, if a defensive end tries to take the inside gap on us, we teach our tackles to immediately abort and try to take that inside gap away. And then it just becomes big on big. Because if they want to go inside, they're going to take themselves into the play. So we're taking that kick. We're throwing shoulders. We're trying to force them outside. If they try to cross our face, we're just locking on, and it becomes a one-on-one -on -one base block inside. That way we can try to negate them as best we can. Because that's where they can hurt us. If they get upfield, we feel like our back can get downhill fast enough that the ends won't be a factor. And we've got, we've got some cut-ups of those, too, that I'd be happy to see in anybody that may want them of how we run base. And against an odd front, we run base where we wrap both tackles. You know, say we get a, a three-man front, and, and we, uh, we want to run base against that. We'll take our guards, and we'll block the end. We'll base block the nose with the center and we'll skip pull our two tackles and climb them to linebacker. Kind of a, a fold look against a 3-4 team, which is something we like to use quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense, Coach. I, I really like that concept to, to protect the counter, too. So, coaches on there, are there any other questions? It, it doesn't seem so, Coach. Um, awesome. Hey, guys, I appreciate it very much. If y'all have any anything you can think of, shoot me an email, send me a message on, on uh, Twitter. I'd you know, love to talk ball with anybody. I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to me today. Yeah, it was a great presentation. Um, I think we all, of, uh, we all could, could see, uh, could see how, how to run GT and what's more important, how to, how to protect the play and you you gave us a lot of adjustments and little little tips and wrinkles we can easily use and put put into our playbook and into our play to to get a little bit better so thank you very much coach i appreciate that thank you yeah and i hope i hope we can all get back to football one day um i think we can, we can stay in contact i wish you wish you all the best for your next present uh, for your next preparation when you can start in june and I appreciate that. Same to you guys. Y'all be safe and, and hopefully we can kind of all get back to it here pretty quick. Yeah, you too, coach. I wish you, wish you a nice day and thank you very much for your time. To yes, sir. Thank you. That great clinic. Goodbye, coach. It. Goodbye.